Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I mean myself, I'm having to re-record this entire video because uh, uh, the last time I recorded it, I had the headphones plugged in, which messed with the microphone, and so it was ridiculously quiet. Anyway, um, it's actually good that I'm having to re-record this because I was salty as hell, and I said some stuff that would have gotten me a community strike, definitely. Um, <laughs> so I'm a little bit more calm. Uh, so now I'm just going to concentrate on the things that matter and not the... I just got to say it, the five inches in between her eyes. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, cogent criticism. Um, so uh, a couple days ago, Scott Snyder, um, I think this is vaguely related to Sean Gordon Murphy. Something happened where um, uh, he was basically trying to delineate the difference between criticism and insults. Now, uh, I ended up doing a video on it, and it had a very, very, very positive review because it had a very positive thing. It turns out that Scott Snyder, if you really, really don't like his book and you're really salty about it, he will DM you and ask him, he will ask you what he can do to uh, get your customer ship. Um, uh, and if you think this is just like a bit, and he just says it, but he doesn't do it, literally an hour before he said that he does it, a friend of mine sent me a screenshot of a DM, and he goes, Scott Snyder just DM'd me. And it, he was doing what he says he does in public, he actually does in private. He actually does DM you very politely, and uh, maybe he'll explain something that um, uh, you were confused on or he didn't explain correctly in the story. Uh, he'll try to you know communicate with you. And everyone, everyone in the comments was saying, that's how he is, dude. That's how he always is. That's how he's been for years. That's how he was when he was doing like backup stories and detective comics. Like he's always been great with people. It's not a coincidence that the most talented person, that the most popular person, that the most successful person is also the best person. It is not coincidence. Um, and then there's SJW Marvel. Uh, Lana Smith is one of the uh, so-called milkshake girls. She is a... Uh, bunch of uh, women who are hired either without experience or with terrible experience, um, as we've seen with the uh, pre-Marvel books edited by uh, Heather Antos. Uh, in, one th in like one year, uh, the assistant editors went from like 20% women to 80% women. It was instant. And it was a publicity stunt. Uh, Marvel was trying to be woke. Marvel was trying to virtue signal. The problem is that the women who are hired for non-legitimate reasons as in not merit, not talent. They know they were uh, hired for that, so they don't have to improve. If you got hired because you're a woman, all you have to do is remain a woman. You never have to say, oh, sales are really bad. I should do something about that. Or like, oh, our six page or our six issue uh, Avengers Warrior or Champions crossover flopped. Uh, we should do something about that before we launch into a 16 part Avengers crossover. I'm not buying that. Nobody's buying it. You, people are nuts. You just had a 32-part Secret Empire that went straight into a six-part Avengers uh, Champions, and now you're going into a 16. You literally just came out, out of a multi... Okay, so all this stuff was planned months ago. Axel Alonso trying to save his job. He lost it. Anyway, we've been selling your brain here a lot, and uh, but there have been some uh, you know voices of wisdom that say, they're, they're saying, hey... He canceled a, a bunch of low-selling books that Alonzo probably would have canceled in three more issues anyway. Also, only one. Oh, no, 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 a couple. Yeah, because even though uh, Gabby Rivera and Cena Grace were not employees, they were co on contract, they're not working anymore. Only three of the people that made SJW Marvel, SJW Marvel, are no longer at Marvel. Axel Alonzo, uh, uh, Gabby Rivera, Cena Grace. Everyone else is still there. Tom Brevoort is still there. Mark Wade is still there. Dan Slott is still there. Now, Dan Slott is acting a lot better on Twitter. And people have told me, with a couple of exceptions, Mark Wade is acting better too. You know, they these guys are late middle aged. These guys are a couple, you know, a decade away from retirement. They they know which side of the bread is buttered. Wait, what? Which side of their bread is buttered on? So I have no idea why that's a saying. Um, but anyway, uh, milkshake girls, they don't care. They're in their mid to late 20s. Honestly, most of them are probably getting help from their family to live in New York City area. These, they're making nothing. But 
As has been said, SJWs seek out positions of influence, not power. Alana Smith has been kind of a uh, mention since the beginning of the channel. One of my saltiest videos ever was when she lectured and just really condescendingly lectured a customer in the uh, letters column for one of the Riri comics uh, on a completely ridiculous, uh, close-minded way. Absolutely insane. This guy's been buying comics longer than she's been alive. And honestly, these, she does not come. You can look at her timeline. Her interest is manga. It's manga. Japanese comics, not American comics. She's gotten in and she's been a real pill with the customers. And uh, this is why this bothers me. You say, oh, well, she's just a pill. Uh, I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta make another comment. Why is her mouth almost closed, but not closed? I did this in the previous video. I want you to do what she's doing with her mouth. Close your mouth all the way. And then just barely open it and then just leave it there like that. It feels so weird. It feels like I'm waiting for someone to put a coin in my mouth. Um, uh, anyway, <laughs> so a lot better than what stuff I said in the, in the previous uh, video. Uh, but anyway, um, so you're saying, well, she's just roasting the customers. Her Avengers books are selling poorly. Her uh, you know, Wasp got canceled. What's the big deal? Here's the big deal. As he dramatically clicks onto another tab. Third comic book store in three months announces closure in San Diego. Uh, I used to live in San Diego from 2000 to 2004. Um, I went to boot camp in San Diego. I love San Diego. Um, it's a great town, great people, great everything. It's got, uh, as it says right here, it's a hot spot for comics. It's home to San Diego Comic Con, IDW Publishing, Wildstorm. They say it was there for a brief time. Wildstorm was there for like 12 years or so, a very long time. I used to, um, I used to, uh, uh, p literally when I would go to the, uh, cove in La Jolla, I would walk by Wildstorm and like peek in the windows <laughs> because like Jim Lee and Will Sportatio, they would show their, they had these really great offices. So you could tell where their office was. So I always peek, but I would never see anyone in there ever, ever, no matter what day I went, I would never see anyone through the windows. Uh, they had a beautiful office right there. Ocean view. Amazing. Um, so anyway. Uh, Rising Sun in Mission Valley, Villainous Lair in Normal Heights, On Comic Ground in Hillcrest, uh, which I used to go to all the time when I was in the Marines, um, out of business. And uh, people like this do not understand what going out of business means. Uh, you went from high school to some liberal arts college, maybe a couple internships, and then a job you didn't deserve. You basically failed upwards. You've never put in the decades, in some case, 1994, 23 years of work. Being a retailer is hard. It is so hard. I have so much admiration for those people. They put everything on the line. The, the risks they take are insane. They have to buy comics sight unseen, effectively. Maybe they get a couple of preview pages. Non-returnable. And then... Marvel wants to constantly lecture and chase away their shrinking customer base while quadruple screwing them, which is something you can't even pay for in freaking Bangkok. Quadruple screwing them by freaking saying, we're going to chase away your customers. Then we're going to have uh, events that uh, only make sense if you buy all 16 uh, issues. Uh, then... We're going to have events that people actually want, like the lenticulars. Oh, you want 50 uh, uh, of the lenticular cover as a venture? That's great. Hey, you got to buy, You have to order 150 copies. You're going to get 100 non-lenticular, which are the same price as a lenticular. So why would anyone buy those when the lenticular are right next to them? They, they have destroyed uh, customers. Um, and it took a while. The deal is with customers or with uh, retailers, they don't go out of business in a month. Horrible, horrible month. They will no, not go out of business. They need usually at least a year, usually a couple years to go out of business. And that's what SJW Marvel did. That's what Alana Smith did. That's what Heather Antos did. That's what the Milkshake Girls, Tom Brevoort, Axel Alonzo, Mark Wade, and Dan Slott. That's what Nick Spencer, that's what they did. They 
killed. I'm not even going to say they put these businesses out of business. They killed these businesses. I have had very small businesses. I've never had a, a, a brick and mortar, as they say. I never had a storefront. You invest so much money. The, the thing I say about running the business is uh, everyone wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. Which means everyone wants to benefit, no one wants to pay the price. It's the store owner who pays the price. It's the publisher who hires everyone and spends a year trying to put a book out and then it flops. Everyone else gets paid but the publisher. Um, everyone got what they wanted except for the retailer. You know, uh, Marvel got the money they wanted uh, for, for a time. The customers got what they wanted, which was a store in their neighborhood or close by. But all, um, eventually these stores were just destroyed. And I really hate the people who did it because I know them. I know their faces. I, can, oh, I can't look them in the eyes. I can look in one at a time. Um, uh, but uh, this is horrible. This is a horrible thing you've done. This is something that you should be ashamed of. Meanwhile, you're trying to shame the people who pay your paltry 50 grand in New York City. I heard you guys make absolutely nothing. Um, but the way you look, <laughs> just looking right at me through that thing. That's okay. That's weird. Um, the way you look at customers, the way you've chased them away has had real effects. It's not just lowering the sales of Avengers. You are destroying people's lives, destroying their livelihoods, destroying everything. They've invested 23 years of their life and they're coming out with nothing. The whole idea about it is something is that you build it and you, and you, and you, you run it till you want to retire and then you hand it off to a family member or you sell it. These people don't get this. These people are what? 50 years old, 55. They got to start over in a destroyed industry, destroyed by people like this. So yeah, I forgot to actually even read her comments. By the way, I'm really glad that first video <laughs> did not work out. I definitely would have, would have gotten a community strike off of that one. Um, so uh, Milkshake Girl goes, so, you know, uh, Scott Snyder made a good uh, comment. Uh, criticism is great. Most creators are hungry for criticism. We want to know what you think. Truly, we look for constrictive reviews, but saying your shit or just insulting someone's work with no explanation as to what's lacking is not criticism, it's just being a dick. Now the thing about this, I'm actually not crazy about this tweet in particular. I love Scott Snyder, he's a great guy, he loves the customers, he tries to work with them. This was part of like a five part tweet, and the other ones were much more reasonable. Uh, what attracted Milkshake Girl to this one is because it involves calling customers dicks, which milkshake people love. So this is her response. And this is, she only responded to this one. Also, if your quote, criticism, unquote, stems from the fact that someone who isn't a white straight guy worked on something, or you enthusiastically follow someone who believes that's a valid critique, no one's obligated to give you the time of day. Um, uh, shut your lips, seriously. I would fire you in a heartbeat i would not give you time to clear out your desk who the hell are you to focus on one race one gender one sexuality and start roasting them first of all nobody is saying this you guys have wasted six months your your captain alex alonzo lost his job because you wanted to do this stupid straw man argument that there people are saying only white straight characters by white straight men that's that's never been true it wasn't true in the freaking 1940s. Certainly is not true in any of the last, geez, almost 30 years I've been actively collecting comics. Um, uh, I'm old. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, you're, you responded to something legitimate with something illegitimate. You got excited about another way to insult the customers. You should be on your knees I'm not going to go to where, I'm, that's not the direction I'm going with this comment, guys. Get your heads out of the gutters. You should be on your knees thanking with typing <laughs> the few remaining customers who stayed around, who are still around to pay your measly paycheck and let you live here and you'd be living in some uncool city where you wouldn't really brag. Hashtag New York City life or whatever the hell you put on your tweets. Honestly, actually, 80% of 
the benefit of living in New York City is just telling people you live in New York City. Yeah, I live in Hell's Kitchen. No big deal. It's actually a big deal. It's real expensive. <laughs> and it's not as good as it sounds. It's definitely not as good as in the movies and TV. Um, but uh, who the hell are you to start focusing? I know it's politically correct to be like, oh my God, white straight man. Like, seriously? Um, uh, but uh, first of all, your dad's white straight man. You are white and straight. Second of all, white straight guys are the biggest market. You have chased away the biggest target demographic. And this is the actions on the objective. This is the result. Hardworking people have vested their entire lives in stores going out of business because milkshake girl here wants to be woke. A milkshake girl needs to get fired immediately. All the milkshake girls do. All the people who would ever denigrate for a second one customer, let alone the biggest customer demographic. Um, this is disgusting. This is the stuff that you should be hanging your head in shame. This is something you should be having your, your hands doing the Picard face palm right between the eyes because there's room. Um, uh, it's disgusting and it needs to stop. C.B. Sibulski's done great. He's done great stuff and I'm very confident that he's going to continue great stuff. These people need to go. No. Th there's no good faith in having someone who for three years has insulted the customer base, has chased them away. And now all of a sudden she doesn't want to get kicked out of her roommate situation out in freaking Clifton, New Jersey or way the hell out in the Bronx or something like that. You need to go. You've utterly failed. You have failed the industry. You've failed the customers. You've failed your company. You've absolutely failed the retailers. There's no coming back from this. This stuff wouldn't fly for one second in the worst McDonald's in the country. There's no reason it should uh, fly at a flagship company like Marvel. So tell me what you think about this video. Tell me if you're one of the 100 or so people that heard the previous one. <laughs> Actually, that's a that's a that's an impossibility. It's like a Zen Cohen. How do you hear a video that has no audio? I actually did have audio, but it was just barely there. So anyway, I'm gonna check the audio before I upload this. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone. Give it to the Super Chat and the Patreon. You're funding original content. And I'll have more videos and comic reviews up later today. Thanks.